I'm going to go through an example with the uncertainty principle where we specifically look at the operators of measuring spin in the x and y directions for a spin one-half system. So this is how we're writing the uncertainty principle uh, in this class. And so we have to remember that this is going to be our uh, RMS deviation for one operator, RMS deviation for another operator, and that the idea being that this must be greater than or equal to one-half magnitude of the expectation value of the commutator of those two operators. Now, so briefly, let's just consider Sx and Sy. So effectively, what we're going to do is check that this holds for a specific situation. You can use this to put a constraint on any of these three things, um, or in this case, we'll just check and say, hey, is it true? So we are going to need to have our uh, RMS deviation for Sx, RMS deviation for Sy, and then we're going to see how that compares to one half magnitude of expectation value of Sx, Sy. And one thing to note is by making this the magnitude, then we don't actually need to worry about the fact that the um, that if we swapped the order of these, this would become negative as we've, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I lost that symbol. Um, that if we swap the order here for the commutation relationship, we would get a minus sign. And if we swap these, because these are just scalars, it shouldn't matter. Well, the magnitude takes care of that. So we can start working on this. And we know that our commutation relationship between these two gives us this. So we get a new operator. Now, something that we have to do, which this is why you have to remember what this notation is. It's not explicit in this step. This is going to be calculated for a specific state. So this is not just true for the operators in general. Like, this should always hold. But we actually need to talk about a specific state. So let's be very simple. And let's talk about a quantum state, which is just going to be spin up in z. OK? And so what that means is we then need to calculate the RMS uncertainty for uh, Sx for our spin z state. And so that was going to be the, um, the expectation value of Sx squared, I haven't left enough room, minus the expectation value squared. But then the other thing that we, we know, and so that would also be for S, Sy then, but then what we also are going to have is that what this becomes, I'm uh, just bringing it down here, is going to be my, my plus ket state with the computation relationship. And we know that's, that's going to give me i h bar s z, and then spin up. So again, we've seen what these are before. Let's actually just focus here. So what is this going to be? Let's work with this in the matrix notation. And so I'm going to drop the, the magnitude for now. And so the i h bar can come out in front. And we're going to switch to using the matrix notation here. So this is going to be 1, 0. This is going to be 1, 0. And then, so i h bar is separate. S c is h bar over 2, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So what we're going to have then is the magnitude of 1, 0, i h bar, h bar over 2, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. OK, and we, we need to get a scalar on the inside. This final magnitude step needs to be a scalar. It might be a complex scalar, but we need a scalar. So um, notice that I'm going to have i h bar squared over 2, 1, 0. And now let's uh, multiply these two objects out. So the 1, 0, 1, 0, row times column. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 0 times 0 is 0. And then over here, we have row times column. 0 times 1 is 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. OK? And then if you notice, this 1, 0, 1, 0 is just going to be 1. So we're actually left with the magnitude of i h bar squared over 2. And so this is a decay where it's the, the squared magnitude. But the, the magnitude of this, we can write this now as the square root of the complex conjugate of this times itself. So negative i h bar 
squared over 2, i h bar squared over 2, and that's just going to be h bar squared over 2. A little bit off the screen. So what we're doing then is going back at this point and saying, okay, I've calculated what this is. We would then need what is our RMS deviation of Sx, Sy, and we'll check to see is that greater than or equal to one half of h bar squared over two. So this video is already a little bit long, so I'll stop here. We'll come back and we'll do the left side of this to check that it's true in a different video.